So let's, let's get into it today. Um, we're in the manifest, um, still in the manifest. And my uh, topic for today is uh, manifesting manhood. Amen? Amen? So let's get started. Um, uh, today I want to touch a few things today. Um, we have a culture where men are still fighting to still find themselves. Also, I want to say thank you to the people online and to the people that are here today. Thank you for, for uh, the Lord waking you up and keeping you in your uh, right mind and in your right spirit on today. Amen. Amen. So men are still fighting for, uh, to find themselves at home, in the workplace, church, in the community. Let me say this, in order to truly find yourself, you first need to, you first need to be looking for God or godly brothers to bring you to God. Today, I'm, today I may step on a few toes, but today I want to just, I just want the men to really go after the things of God. And if you have to walk away from the past, some of the people, well, today is your day today to do that. Us as ministers, as we stand before you, as I said, one, we have to hear from God. Two, if we are to teach it, we need to live it. Let me say that again. If we are to teach it, we need to live it. Because you can say and preach and recite scriptures all you want, but if you're not living what you're teaching, it falls on deaf ears. And humble yourself to the fact that you may not know everything. Amen? As we go through Bible study and as we go through uh, Shamar class and as, as, um, as Pastor Rhonda and I, I'm just going to say it, uh, Minister Angie, as they are teaching, you know, the other, the other class and bringing people more closer to God, hey, if you are teaching it, you must live it. Amen? This is why we need to go back to the basics, to get back on track with God. Because we see our young men in the family, they need some guidance. Ladies, if you're, you know, the, the father in the thing, you know that your young men, that they need guidance. Amen? They need that extra push to get down the road. So in men's ministry, so men's ministry is important today and yesterday. Amen. So when the pandemic hit, let's just say, did some of us spend that extra time with the young men in our house? Did we spend that extra time with the young people that were in our house? It could be the men, it could be the young ladies, whoever is in your house that if you're the adult, you have to set the pace. You have to set what's going on. Amen. Amen. The thing is, um, did we say anything about God during the pandemic? Did we say anything? Did we say how we felt about God? Or did we say how important, how important is God to us right now? Look, I said we need to step on some toes. Yours, mine, we really need to step on it. Men, we have to step up. Before I move on today, my, my scripture to start, start everything out is in Ephesians 2 and 10, in the King James Version. And this is uh, our main scripture um, and our title scripture for our men's ministry. Amen. And it reads... For we are his workmanship, created in Jesus Christ unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. As Mika said uh, earlier, and I had to show um, my wife, uh, Apostle, and then I had to show Minister Rhonda, um, we, do, we do tie in words together. So when she said divine appointment, my first thing on here after this is, there is a divine design that God has for us. We are his workmanship. He is looking for a man 
a kingdom man, and he is not looking for the letter M when you fill out your gender, when you're filling out a questionnaire. I hope you got that. He's not just looking for, as you put down, what is your gender, male or female? He's looking for a kingdom man. He ain't looking for just when you put down male, amen? He's looking for something else. He's looking for substance. So when you're filling out an application or when you're trying to apply for a job, you know your credentials, there's more behind you than just, I'm just a male. He's looking for a kingdom man. And you're looking for a kingdom purpose in your life, amen? So as we, when we had men's ministry, we talked about the design of man and what was the model that we needed to follow. And the model was Jesus Christ. In our studies, we said, and in, in our booklet, it said, we needed to create and cultivate an atmosphere that was of God and what the model was of Jesus and his 33 years on this earth, or his 33 years in the ministry, but it was like three years of the ministry, but 33 years of life, amen? So we said we needed to create and cultivate. So the first thing is, how do we create? We need to create an environment that helps you Yeah, we need to create an environment that helps you and others grow. Where you sow is where you grow. God created you in his image. We have a good starting point. We need to walk with God, amen? So number two, cultivate. So when we're cultivating, are you planting good seeds or are you planting bad seeds? If you're doing both, just remember with a little water, they both will spring forth a harvest. So watch what you're planning, amen? God said be fruitful and multiply. So what you say and do and think is important down this trip to manhood. Remember, God is watching. People are watching too. And I love to say what OC said before, the streets are watching. The children in our church right here, they're, they're looking at the men and modeling what, what, what they see. And I hopefully that they see, you know, a kingdom and godly man. So when they're looking at Pastor Vance or Pastor O.C. or Uncle Troy or Brother Hassan and Jamal and all the other men that are here, as they call, as they call Uncle George, they call him Uncle George and all the other men. I don't want to just say that. I, missing out, but all the other men, they're, they're looking at a godly, and they're looking at a uh, kingdom man so they can look up and so they can, so they can follow. Amen? Amen? So, kingdom, kingdom-minded, a kingdom-minded person stays fixed on God. We have to be ready when God is looking for a few good men. Amen? Let's look, let's look at it this way. God chose you for something. When God chooses you something, chooses you to do something that he wants to move in the earth, he pretty much drafts you to fill a position or a need, amen? So I want to ask you today, where are all my sports fans at today? Amen? Where are all my sports fans today? I know that some of us, you know, we had teams and everything, and, and you know, this past weekend was the NFL draft, and, you know, coming up is the NBA draft, and, you know, we were, you know, some of us were looking, and I know I had to study for my sermon, and don't tell Apostle, but I did kind of look at the TV a little bit to see who the Steelers were kind of taking, amen? And my, my sister Angie, she know, we was looking about see who who we are getting. So during the draft, in the natural, a team is looking for a right person that fits their team. So when, a pers- when they're drafting somebody, they're looking for size, they're looking for speed, they're looking for the strength, and also they're looking for the character of the person. It's very important. As I said, God drafts us to fill a position and a need. So in the natural and in the world, it's the same thing as, as the draft, that they're looking for 
a certain kind of person that fits their team. And a lot of times, it doesn't matter how your speed is, or how your size, how your strength is, a lot of times, and this is what God always looks at, he always looks at the character. The character is what's inside of you. It doesn't matter how you look outside, but he looks on the inside. It's the character that counts. So the same thing, as I said, when a team is drafting somebody, it's the same thing with God. When he needs to fill a position, as I said, it's your character. Are you manifesting manhood in your character? So when God needs, God needs you to really be all in. He needs you to be really all in. Not listening to your homies that are still stuck in yesterday. Because sometimes we, we try to, instead of we bypass God, sometimes we go for ungodly counsel instead of godly counsel. Because we know that misery loves company. When you are trying to strive to move ahead, a lot of times they want to pull you back to where they were and how they are stuck in yesterday. Amen. He will take the most unlikely people to do what he needs to do in this earth. But you have to be ready when the call comes in. Kind of like when the, the, the kids are sitting there with their family and this certain team calls and, and, and tells them that, hey, when the commissioner comes up, you're the person that we're drafting. You have to be ready for the call when Jesus is calling you to do something and make a difference in this world. Amen. So there's many people in the Bible that we can look at, but let's start with Brother Adam and let's start with Brother Abraham. They were chosen by God to do good works because of their relationship with God. But we know the story of Adam. He, in a sense, you can kind of say he rebelled against God, in a sense. And he became a misguided man, and he knew better because he walked with God. He knew everything. God walked alongside him. They was like, hey, you know, I'm coming down. I'm going to, you know, chat with you, see how everything's going. You know, how's, 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 the, how's those trees going? How's those plants going? Hey, how are those animals going and everything? And he got so comfortable with him. And like I said, we know the story that he did so well that God said, you know what? I'm going to give you a helpmate. So he gave him Eve to help him out because he loved him so much because of the relationship that they had. But we know what happened in the story. And who did he blame? He said, it is that woman that you giveth me. And then in the same, same thing, the person that he walked with earlier before, he was like, I'm going to blame God. So he blamed him. So then, you know, we know what happened. Now he had to work harder for to make ends meet. And then he got kicked out of the garden. Amen. So we got to remember when God's really walking with us and when God is really ready to bless us, we have to still be on that line and our character still has to match up, and we have to know that it's God or bust. Amen? So, <laughs> amen. Now that I said that he, uh, Adam had to work harder, he knew it because he had a great relationship with him. As it said, they walked together in the cool of the evening, just him and God. I mean, can you picture that? I mean, it, I can picture me and Apostle walking on the beach and hand in hand and in, in the cool of the, of the day or whatever. But I mean, when we're with God, think about that. When we're with God, I mean, he's your ultimate buddy, your ultimate friend, your ultimate homeboy. He's your ultimate whatever, your ultimate teammate. You're walking with him in the cool of the evening and it's like you've seen stuff happening and it's like man if I just if I just hold on to him it's like man whatever I think he'll do he was walking with him in the cool of the evening 
But he made that one error that cost him the garden. Amen. So let's look at let's look at Brother Abraham. Abraham was a friend of God. He feared God. He loved God. God said, I will make you a great nation. He did right by God. To Abraham, it was God's way or no way. To him, it was God's way or no way. And we know the story about Abraham. And the one part I really like is when he knew when God walked up. And he knew. He just started getting stuff ready. Hey, Sarah, come on. Hey, we got, woo, 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 woo. We got, we got guests. We got, I mean, we really got a guest here. And then when he bargained and kind of bartered with God about, would you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for, or would you destroy the good with the wicked? Would you destroy it for 50? Would you destroy it for 45? And then he went on and on and on to where it was like, God was like, hold up. And we know what happened in that case. But the thing about Abram and Abraham was he was a friend of God. So today I want us to be, and us to be known as a friend of God. In our journey with God, he puts greatness in all of us. The problem is, is our commitment to God and the things of God. The problem is our commitment. How much commitment do we have for the things of God and to God? I mean, even when we're preparing our sermons and when we're preparing for study, I mean, how much time do we really, really spend that is at God's level? And I can say myself, a lot of times, I don't, and I can be truthful about that. And I pray that you can be truthful about what you do with your time with God. Amen. I know sometimes I miss the mark. And I know I have. I know I have with, with, my, uh, with my, my, my daughter and with our relationship that we, that we had. I know I've missed the mark in what I was supposed to do as a, as a father. And I take responsibility for some of the things that happened. But God knew what was in me and what I was supposed to do and how I was supposed to nurture and help her. Amen. The thing about it, he gave me a second chance when I married Apostle and then I got I got I got Robbie and I got Melvin and I got Dee Dee and then I got Bree. So I got a second chance and I would always tell them that you guys are my second chance to make better. So I had to show them and I had they had to see. It was better for me to show them to, than to tell them because they've already heard the false words. They already had the words fall in front of their feet from their father. So they had to see a real man that was able to accept the responsibilities of being married and us combining our families together. So I got a second chance with being with those young people. And now those young people are married, kids, working, cars, out of our house, <laughs> out of our house, and doing what they're supposed to be doing, amen? So that's my glory, and I thank you, God, for that, amen? God, I'm just telling you, God, I, I, I love you so much. And God, I want to try to do better and be better. I want our relationship, God, to be, I want it to be like how Adam was. I want to be able to not hide from you. But I want to be that person that walks with you in the cool of the evening, God. And I hope that you guys feel the same way that you want to walk with God in the cool of the evening. Not hide from him. The thing is, we need to put the old man away and we need to restore it with the new man. Amen. Walk in the cool of the evening with God. Man, that would be so great. Because I, I'd be telling, well, God would probably be telling me a lot of stuff, but I'd be asking, you know, hey, can you do that? Wow. 
look at that. Wow. Hey, take me here. Take me there. Okay, but manifesting our manhood is more than just chasing a career. It is chasing after God. It is, cha it is helping our families. It is to help our brothers and sisters that need our help. So what's the next steps in our manhood? And this is my, this is my last, last point. What is the next step that we're doing to follow through with manhood? Let's call it recalculating if you're heading in a direction you need and plan, amen? So the first thing is, how, we, how do we recalculate? How do we get back, back in order? How do we readjust? How do we restore what we may have lost? And you know, we are, we, God sees so much in us. He said we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And all the stuff that you know in the scriptures of what God, how he feels about us and what he thinks about us. So let's, 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 let's go with, start with number one. Trust and pray. Ask God for strength to embrace a new life. Trust him to do what you're unable to do on your own. Trust him to do, because we can do stuff on our own strength. Right now, we can, you know, we can get up, we can walk down these steps, we can walk, we can walk out to the car, we can do it. But trust for the unseen and the unknown. Trust God. He he will do it. God will do it. Number two, think. If you're, say for instance, if you're given 80 years on this earth, and right now you're not at 80, but you're, you're years away, what's the best use of the time that you have remaining? What are you doing with your time? What is the best use of the time you have remaining? Are you chasing God? Are you looking for God? Are you doing what God's asking you to do? Are you saying, God, Lord, here I am? Because it's, when it's all said and done, it's always and will always be about God. So what do you do? Um, so what do you do and what do you want your story or your legacy to be? What do you want your story to be? God's already got it written out. But first thing is, you have to first seek the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. And we know that everything will be added unto it. So what do you want your story and your legacy to be? Amen. Number three, speak up. Now, this is I, I love this part right here. So I want you guys online. I want you guys here to, you know, hear, see this part right here. Um, speak up. Take a close friend, a pastor or a trusted advisor to lunch. You guys got quiet in here. Y'all got quiet in here. Okay, lunch, oh, take, them to, take them to lunch. And when you take them to lunch, come clean, come clean. Come clean to what is really ailing you and what's really bothering you. But make sure it's a close friend, a pastor. Basically, make sure it's a trusted person, amen? A trusted advisor. Say the words out loud to someone you trust is a big step away from destructive behavior and towards a new life. Amen. Number four, change your course. If you're engaged in destructive behavior, step away from it. Remove yourself from the source of your temptation and replace destructive behavior with healthy behavior, amen? Number five, find a mentor. There are men who are already walk, there are men who have already walked the path you're considering. Seek them out. We can't do this journey alone. As I said, try to find wise counsel. Don't try to find unwise counsel, because like I said, your homies could just they could tell you anything and everything. And I remember before I was, I was uh, married and I was listening to some of the garbage that some of uh, my friends were spewing. I was like, hey man, I'm good, man. I'm, yeah, me, me and her are getting married and I'll holler at you, you know, peace. 
I'll holler at you. Because let me just say this, because when I was single and they were married, I was like, well, hey, man, I don't want to intrude and blah, blah, blah. And they were like, nah, man, it's okay, it's okay. But then when I decided to get married, I'm like, nah, I got to do this the right way because I seen what was going on with you and your stuff, and it was a mess. So, nah, I'm, I'm doing it my way. So you're just going to be mad at me, and I'm, I'm just going to stay at home with my beautiful wife that just walked up right there. Amen. So we can't do this alone in the journey. Amen. Number six, seek counseling or a support group. Some behaviors are difficult to break. Spend time with Christian counselors or support group is a wise move with dealing with excess baggage, like what Terry and George do with them, the men, that they talk to them and, you know, lead them and guide them into the right direction, amen? So seek counseling. Seek a support group. Seek men that are moving in the direction that you want to move, and they've already been there, so they can, they can bring you up and they can tell you, you know, the pitfalls and tell you when you're going to, when you're going to backslide and everything. So find and seek wise counsel, amen? Number seven, go with God. He's waiting to direct your GPS. That's right. Amen. Say that. He is waiting to direct your GPS. And that is my final, final point. I just want to say, flow with God, find God, go with God. Make sure that if you have a kingdom man at the house, Ladies, I just ask that you support, support, support. Lift them up, keep them up as we try to support and, and lift you up and the, and the families that he has given us stewardship over. Amen. So I thank you guys on today, and I pray that some of this stuff you can take home, some of the stuff that you can, you can chew on, on later, and then if you're watching the videos later, um, I ask that you, you find something in here that touched your heart on today. And Lord, I just, I, just, I just say, I just thank you, Lord. And just as I said before, I want to get to the point in God that I'm walking with you in the cool of the evening. And even if my wife's with me, then we're both walking with you in the cool of the evening. And we're both smiling and, and just, you know, knowing. And then, man, if you... Like I said the other time I was here preaching, just like with my with my granddaughter, just like man, if you just and if you just take us on up, I'm just I'm gonna ride with you. <laughs> Be like, hey, I'm here. But I just thank I just thank you on today, and I I just want to say if you are looking for a church home, we are New Beginnings Discipleship Ministry. We are who we are, and we believe that God is everything to us. Amen. We believe that the bottom line, bust, nothing, it's all God. Even though we may go through, through some stuff, but it's God or bust. Amen. Amen. And if you need us to bring you to the kingdom and to see this person that we're talking about, you can walk into the cool of the evening with, let us bring you into the kingdom and let us, let us, let us tell you about our God. Let's tell you about the benefits when you fill out an application at a job. Let me tell you about the, the health plan. Let me tell you about the expense plan. And let me tell you about the, the other stuff, that the unseen stuff that, you know, just pops up and comes up because I was faithful and because I believed in what the word said and I believed that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask for or think. And if you just need prayer on today. The altar is open, and let us pray with you, touch and agree with you. And we just want to say we just we, we, we love you on today. We thank you. We thank you for the people that are here. We thank you for the folks that are online. Amen. And we ask that you pass on God to somebody else today. Amen. Amen. So let's do the benediction. Let's, let's um, keep seeking God. And whatever we have to do on today, we just ask God that you lead and guide us. 
So, Father, we just we just pray, oh, oh, Father God, that you keep blessing us, oh, Lord, Father God. Lord, we ask that you shine upon us, oh, Lord, Father God. We ask that you give us traveling grace on today, oh, Lord, Father God. Lord, we ask, as we talk about manifesting manhood, that we, and not just the men, but the women, they can, they can manifest manhood as well. But we can speak into somebody's life, oh, Lord, Father God, but let you be the person that is helping us speak life into that person, oh Lord, Father God. So Lord, bless us on today, and I thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the blessings that you have given us thus far, oh Lord, Father God. If you stop blessing us today, I would still be thankful, oh Lord, Father God. So Lord, we thank you, oh Lord, Father God. We love you. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Glory.